Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and here we are once again at the Rutland Lathe. This is Let's Look Under the Old Girl's Apron, Part 9. All right, we're getting ready to install the apron itself. This is this is the the heartbeat of, of the control of the carriage and auto feeds, thread feeds, and also the lever is attached to this as well for your direction and engagement of of uh, that direction. All right, now I have cleaned all the bores of where these rods go through. Some of the things have been painted. I have the, the bearing cap here and uh, uh, that will be one of the last things that we add on. Now, it did have a piece of this Orient paper here and uh, happens to be 5,000 thick and that's what they had in between there so we had to duplicate that. But we didn't have to send overseas to get that because we actually have USA American paper right here and this was made in the United States uh, and here's a close-up of that Florence Kentucky okay CBS bag absolutely free and also too it says recycle okay please recycle this bag and and I am recycling and I'm I'm making parts uh, okay and this happens to be a shim or gasket part um, and that will be installed on on uh, the lathe there all right, I'm going to go ahead and stand up here and we're going to start um, putting the rods onto here so that we can flip this up and then put it in place over there. And I'm going to show you how I get this up into location and how we put the rods, uh, locate them back with the roll pins that they have. Some lays actually have taper pins and tapers. Uh, the taper pins are a higher quality than roll pins but if roll pins are are used properly there's nothing wrong with what they're doing in this uh, instance here and we're going to show you how to go ahead and set this up so that all the rods spin stress-free and in line and no matter where you put the carriage in there that's the whole idea is you want you want those rods to be as stress-free at that end as you do at this end here all right Okay, the first thing we're going to do is, this is the worm gear that drives this uh, for your, your feeds, okay, your general purpose feeding, facing, uh, and all of that. Now, <clears throat> this, we took that, remember we built up and put that uh, bushing or that thrust washer in here. Uh, bronze, silver saw that in. There's no more play in here or there's very, very minimum play there. And uh, now this service here is, you know, rough machine and then they ground it and hand fit it uh, to where it fits in there. These holes are extremely <laughs> large. They made that so that this thing can float around and you can get it adjusted. And that's, that's one of the, their, their designing is to go ahead and be able to slap this up there. And then once you lock this down after it's in place, then, then it'll hold that position and it'll drive the lathe and everything else. Can that be improved on? It probably can be, but we're not going to try to improve that right now. We just want to get this on here and, um, and have it pointing in the right direction so that we can make up that end of the rod itself. And uh, we'll take, I think that's 12 thousands, or I mean 12 millimeter here. So there we go. Just a little bit of motion there. If we have to loosen them, we'll loosen them. All right. Now the next thing we're going to put in here is we're going to we're going to slide the lead screw. Now this lead screw is is for threading and um, chasing um, a a pitch a combination of your choice. And we're going to slide this through here. We're sliding it through the half nuts that that engage to drive the carriage with this rod and there we're just going to tighten that down on there now that that holds that in position right there now we can stare down and we stare at this rod in relationship to that rod right there and we can see that they're not quite in line and i'm going to trust this one here a little bit more so i'm just going to pivot this just slightly there we go and just so there's no play in there Okay, now the next rod is actually the lever that controls 
your direction okay and it goes down underneath this whole thing and it has two bolt holes that bolt into here and those two allens I've got them over here I'm not bothering with camera angles to get you on the other side and all of that for this operation here all right and we just need to snug these up slightly Okay, still a little bit flexing here, but it'll hang on there. That's what we want. All right, now we can slide this to where the rods are almost all the same length right here. All right, I think we're ready. We're going to flip this thing back up the other direction, upright. This has no oil in it, if you didn't guess that already. Okay, I think we're ready now. We put our wrenches up here. These are the bolts that actually go down through here and hold this. And these are the two bolts that will hold the, the bearing cap on the end. Now, we're just scooting. I think we're going we're gonna to go ahead and slide this on in. We do need a, a um, board to fit underneath here. I think this is something something like we had there and I forget if I had, had put it underneath there drag it in or out all right and we're just gonna go ahead and slide this in all right we're gonna go ahead and slide our carriage back here All right, we got uh, two of our mill studs here that we're putting down in. Okay. We had our nuts here. Everything kind of like took a little topple there when we broke loose the surface tension on the uh, the carriage. <laughs> it is a new fit, and we uh, we threw some oil in there. And uh huh. All right, there's our other bolt there. And there's our nut. One nut. There's our other nut. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go get a couple of the uh, mill hold downs to make up spacing because of our shoulder here, and we're just gonna slowly lift this up so that the carriage actually has got it, and then after the carriage has got it, we're able to move forward and half slowly. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and I think I think we'll put the tall one on here first. We have them so we can stack them like that if we want because we got to take up some of that play in there. All right, so we're gonna. We're going to grab this up here, get this nut started. Okay, it's hanging. All right, we got this one over here. Come back to this side here. All right, we can slide that that way and that one that way. It looks like we can get our 
our bolts down in here. Those are the tailstock ones, or the uh, aft bearing. Okay, we're just bringing these down to where we know that they're bringing it up level and then we're just cracking them loose. This still has a little bit of room to move around. Make sure. Okay. All right, we can pull these out. We'll put the other two bolts in. We know that we're safely up there. This is starting to want to engage. So it's not binding. We know that, that that tooth is not on top of the rack gear. Just kind of keeping them loose right now. I'm not tightening them up totally. Okay, now we can slide this back and forth. All right, and first thing we'll do, move our two by four out of here. And I'm gonna loosen, I'm gonna loosen this feed here just slightly or uh, direction control I should say and the feed seems to be fine I can get that engaged alright and okay this switch has a little square uh, post that sticks out and this bracket right here holds this diameter for it to pivot okay so the weight is not going to be on that switch so anyway we worked out what on our way in there okay and we stare down in there and we can see where that set screw actually sits. <laughs> we had to stop for a second. The mail lady, you know it's Christmas time, okay? So we only have we only have a couple days before Christmas here. And uh, so she's been having some packages. All right. So we, we go ahead and we're, we're gonna bring this Allen in here and we're gonna snug that up. All right, and then our direction control. All right, we got to get the uh, turns pretty good. All right, we're gonna loosen this back up because we're gonna want to we're gonna want to spin this freely back and forth when we get that other piece in there. And then that way we're not we're not putting any force on that on that center shaft there for the switch right now. All right, we have two roll pins to drive in here, and we're gonna line up. First off, we're gonna just we're gonna rotate this around. And the reason why we're rotating it around, we're just kind of looking to see if there was ever any match marks. And I don't see any match marks, and I didn't match mark it beforehand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna put this in here, and then we're gonna be rotating it around. We're gonna look at both sides, and that hole is perfectly aligned either direction. We don't see any difference. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead.
and we got a little punch here. We want to set that slightly below there just so the reason why we do that more than anything else is nothing will catch on to that and it splits the difference of that roll pin in there but nothing you know no stringy chips no threaded rag or anything else you don't want it to you don't want it to just start winding up something right there it always happens when you're not paying attention to it okay now I'm actually I'm undoing the two half nuts so that I can slide this rod in here rotate that so we're in line Here again, we're going to stare down through. Before we just hammer that, that in there, okay, this one was not in line, okay, so um, I rotated it around. It was blocking one direction there. And now we can tap this in here. Here again, we're going to put it, set it down in below that surface. And we're going to rotate it around. Okay, that looks good. That dirt from cleaning and everything else in behind this uh, one piece here. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the bearing cap on the other end here okay we're just gonna move our rag back out of the way here a little bit I, I I think that should be able to fit down in there now we're just gonna put a little tiny bit of oil on the end of these okay the bottom one doesn't have an oiler and doesn't it doesn't doesn't get lube but we we want to make sure that there is a little bit on it before we get started here all right now I'm gonna slip the block over the end and then I'm gonna slide the gasket in behind it okay before I do that I'm just gonna check and see how I'm doing as far as alignment here I gotta stick my head in here. Okay, okay, so we're pretty well aligned right there. Now I'm going to slip the gasket in behind here. We could have taken uh, some spray adhesive, probably would have helped putting it on the back side there. There we go. Alright, let's put the other bolt in here. Okay, here again, we brought them down tight and then just backing them off slightly. Okay, that one rotates there, that one rotates, that one rotates. All right, let's back you up a little bit and we're going to get a good feel on it. 
Okay, here we go again. We're just kind of like lightly loosening up these. They, they got us set into the spot that they originally were in. I mean, we're putting this thing back together exactly the way it was. Okay, we're feeling all the rods here at this this end here. They all feel pretty good there. Okay, we're going to roll it to the other end. Hey, before we do it, let's just go ahead and we're going to throw a little bit more oil down in here in our little feeders for the ways. Feels good here, there. Okay, that feels good. I think I'm going to tighten down the the uh, feed here now that I'm at this end. And we're good. I think I'm going to tighten these down here as well. I'll really cinch them down in a short bit same thing here okay still feels good that still spins really good that's good all right all right let's go ahead and we're gonna tighten our little set screw in here now Now I can hear the I can hear the switch now. All right. Here again, we'll put just a little bit more oil in here. Might as well just, you know, get it really get it flowing. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. The more oil on a lathe, the better. Seeing that glossy oil all over the place. That's what you want. You want to keep it flowing. And one when you got a good system like this, I those little tiny little ball bearing oilers there uh, just never get a good oil can that lubes those up good. And you always, you know, I don't think they're sanitary either. I'd rather have a flip top like this. Which I just installed on here. I took out the uh, the stock one there. Um, I'm not because this thing moves all over. There's no way I can put the auto oiler on that. All right. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our 12 millimeter. We're going to start tightening up that that assembly down underneath and making sure that it stays stress free. Okay, I got to get my low rider seat here. I'm loving my low rider seat. I actually had to put uh, crutch tips on the bottom with uh, some washers and stuff like that because the legs were starting to go through all my mats. I got all those new mats and. Uh, uh, I moved the seat real quick, but it'd stay there stuck in the mat. All right.
Excellent. Okay. Let's go ahead. We've got our little cover now. We can put our cover on our little electric switch here. And got one little tricky thing here and <laughs> it goes right on there simple as pie if you get it in the right spot Doesn't have anything to do with that. There we go. Okay. Um, two little tiny screws we got to find. Let's go ahead and uh, let's assemble our compound on here now. We're just giving a little bit of oil for the surfaces to rub on. Sits right on top of here. Locates in here. Okay, we're not going to be running this without putting oil in there, so don't worry about that. We, we got some other things to do here, but we want to go ahead and we wanted to slip our compound on here and get the whole view of the project here. We're going to get a little bit bigger nuts. We don't really kind of like these small pattern nuts, but the ones that came with it were pretty well worn out. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and set this for like what I would if I was threading. I think that's the mark they had. I'll be I'll be checking that out. All right, and we haven't pulled this apart yet. We'll probably pull this apart, clean the gib, and some things like that. But for right now, we're all set. We actually have a oiler down here on on this uh, hand wheel. We might incorporate that in the auto oiler as well. Okay, and one thing that we do want to do is uh, get in here and squirt a little oil on that that worm gear right now. Put a little bit in from each side if we can get to it from this side here. Nope. It's all pretty much from the front side here. There's a little there's a little trough there and you kinda it can ride down in the oil. Alright. Alright, feels good. Let's get a couple indicators on here and remove my motor over there and we're going to start aligning the headstock to the lathe. 